Hello, good morning. I hope that everyone is well and that you've had a good week. This week's gone so quickly. Um, I was last with you on Saturday of last weekend and um, I mentioned that on Sunday I was going to Dartmoor for a walking holiday with one of my best friends, Elizabeth, and that Bertie Boo was coming with us. And Bertie Boo really enjoyed his holly bobs. He really did. He had a lovely time. Um, he's a dog that you can take anywhere and he was so well behaved in the hotel and the restaurants and um, he had a fabulous time. I met with Elizabeth um, around lunchtime on the Sunday at the hotel where we were staying and we were staying right on the moor and from the hotel we could walk straight out um, onto the moorland and um, we enjoyed a fabulous walk to Wistman Woods and from there we went on and um, walked to three different tours and um, we saw lots of sheep and we saw um, wild ponies and we saw um, cattle that graze out on the moors and those animals they they have to be hardy to survive on that moor um, when the wind and the snow comes it's a, a brutal place to be but it's also a very um, beautiful as well as brutal place to be anyway we had a fabulous walk on the Sunday afternoon. We stretched our legs after our drive and we filled our lungs with this beautiful, fresh moorland air. And that gave us a good appetite for um, our meal on Sunday evening. And um, it was so nice to be together. I've missed Elizabeth so much. This year is the longest that we have ever been apart because we normally meet up a couple of times a year and, and um, have a couple of days away and, and all sorts of adventures. Um, on the Monday, which was our big walking day, the weather was atrocious. It really, really was. And uh, we walked um, about 10 miles in the rain and um, we were absolutely sodden. And I couldn't take any photographs off the Monday because it was just too wet to be using my phone. But um, we enjoyed our walk and the rain didn't bother Bertie Boo at all. And when we got back to the hotel, although we had to um, dry Bertie off, well, I dried him off before he went in the car. I took loads of um, micro towels for him. But when we got back to the hotel, we had trouble getting undressed because our clothes were so wet. We were trying to peel our clothes off. Anyway, we got into the hot shower and um, we met back up in the lounge and we sat in some really comfy sofas in front of a fire and chatted and chatted. And then we had another lovely meal uh, that evening. And then on the Tuesday, we said goodbye and came back to our respective homes. But Elizabeth and I are getting back together in November, providing our lockdown uh, rules don't prevent us doing that when Elizabeth comes down to stay in one of our cottages so I'll be seeing her again in a few weeks time. So um, those couple of days away sort of ate into my working week but I have got stitching in this week and I've continued to work on uh, Cicely Margaret Ingram and I have now finished this beautiful band across the bottom. And those colours are divine. So unusual. A really beautiful colour combination. Um, there we have it. Isn't that beautiful? A beautiful sort of bluey grey. Um, yeah, bluey grey. Um, blue <laughs> or a grey blue I should say maybe and this sort of um, very pale terracotta very very nice together and um, those colours are so calm that it was really lovely stitching with these beautiful calm mellow colours the whole sampler is filled with really mellow colours very delightful to work with um, 
that's all I've really done stitching wise. I've been very, very busy um, just finishing my research on a sampler that we're going to be releasing on December the 26th, which is Boxing Day in the UK. And it's also Hands Across the Sea Sampler's fifth birthday. And um, on the 26th of December, it's going to be a special day for two other needle workers. All of this year, we have been running a giveaway for two antique samplers. And um, everybody who has stitched and finished a Hands Across the Sea samplers, sampler this year um, are eligible to enter the draw for these two samplers. So um, if you have been stitching on a Hands Across the Sea samplers, uh, sampler this year, um, you ought to go and find that give a, giveaway uh, video uh, that I released at the very beginning of this year outlining all the terms and get your entry in. A lot of people have entered uh, the giveaway and um, it's going to be really, really exciting. Anyway, um, my research has taken me back to um, 1811 and the years leading up to 1811 and it's been very very interesting so um, that's sort of where I've been this week in my life um, I've also um, been dealing with a lot of correspondence I get a lot of emails from needle workers and um, an email that I got, not just from one person, but many people, was when I was talking about um, Clara and Maud Picanel, um, the two sisters that stitched this beautiful Bristol Orphanage sampler, I had a book in my hand and I was talking um, about the workhouse that the two girls and their brothers were put into before they got to the orphanage. Um, people have been asking me what is the book well the book is not needlework related at all it's a book about the Henley Union Workhouse the story of Townlands by Valerie Alasia there's the book you can freeze the video and write the title and the author's name down um, this has got nothing about needlework in at all it's uh, all about the history of this particular workhouse and um, I always enjoy going down these rabbit holes that samplers lead us to because you always learn something and I think that if you learn or, or or investigate um, the times um, that these girls lived in and other people's stories from those times, you can sort of understand maybe a little bit more about their lives. Um, life was very, very cruel uh, centuries ago, particularly for people who were poor um, or people who um, didn't have anybody like these orphans or you know people that suffered ill health and couldn't work to provide themselves um, it was cruel times but do you know what these young girls with their needle they could earn a living for themselves it might have been very very hard work long work but they did have a skill that could provide an income uh, so that they could feed and clothe and house themselves and their children. My grandmother used to take in mending and washing to provide for her family when her husband died, leaving her with very, very young children before the times of um, state help. Um, anyway, um, that was the book that so many people asked me about. Um, this week I did have a new purchase come. I have um, been researching a Quaker sampler that um, we're probably going to be reproducing and um, I have um, the Quaker schoolgirl samplers uh, from Ackworth book by Carol Humphreys which is a fabulous book 
Um, it's a book that's out of print and is highly sought after, so you will pay a lot of money for this book, buying it second hand, unfortunately. Um, so I have been uh, referencing this book, but I also learned that um, there was another book um, available that spoke or um, had about the Ackworth School um, motif patterns in. And this was a book that was originally um, published by um, a company called Needleprint. Um, and um, Stitchy Box um, must have bought the rights to this book and they have this book available on their website. And it has, um, it's a record really of all the different um, motifs that you would find um, in the Ackworth uh, samplers. And um, this is assisting me with my research into the particular sampler that I have. Um, Liz from Stitchy Box was very, very good to deal with. Um, I placed my order and within a very short time, um, not only had I had an automatic um, email acknowledging my order, but Liz actually sent me an email. Um, she offered a very sort of personal service, which is very, very nice. And um, the book arrived very promptly from the US. So if you are interested in um, Ackworth samplers and um, the motifs in those samplers, that is a super book to get. Um, and it is just um, recording the um, patterns um, from the Ackworth samplers. There's no history about Ackworth in, in the book. Um, okay, so what else has happened this week? I've had some emails about the um, Martha Dawson Stitch Along that's going to be starting at the beginning of 2021. And people are asking me, how do they join up for the Stitch Along? Well, this Stitch Along is being run by Krista Gramer of Just Stitching Along. And Krista and I co-admin our Sampler Years, which is a group on Facebook. And if you wish to join in the Stitch Along, um, you know, you can just stitch this um, without being a member of the group. But um, in the uh, Facebook group, our Sampler Years, Krista will have every month a live stitching for this sampler. Um, so the questions I was being asked is how do you get access to the stitching and the stitch along and that is through our sampler years. If you wish to buy the uh, PDF download that is available on the Hands Across the Sea samplers website for instant download and the start date is the beginning of 2021. So those were the questions I was being asked. Um, another question I was being asked a lot about in the last few weeks. Um, I can't remember how, but I did a video um, where this sampler was in the background. I know what it was. Uh, Sandra and I were being interviewed for a uh, floss tube video from Sam Bree. And this sampler was in the background and um, we've had so many inquiries about this sampler. Um, well, this is the finished model. The uh, original sampler was reproduced by Sandra and the model was stitched by Leona Sweeney. And this is one of the models that we have to release um, in the months ahead. Um, we've got a lot of models backed up waiting for release. Um, last year was a very productive year for myself and Sandra and for our model stitchers and again this year has been a very productive year. Sandra and I and our model stitchers, um, you know, we used our time in lockdown um, to focus on our needlework. Our needlework kept us sane in um, lockdown. So um, this is one that will come out um, in 2021 and we are aware that there are a lot of people wanting to stitch this sampler and we are trying to release our samplers as quickly as we can. Um, 
the Anne Morrison Stitch Along. Here's Anne Morrison. I'm sure you're very familiar with seeing this lovely sampler now. Um, the people in the UK that purchased just the booklet, um, the majority of those people have received their booklet this week. Um, overnight, I received the second list of booklets to ship out and they will be um, packed and labelled ready to go to the post office on Monday morning and uh, by Monday morning the people on that second list would have received a tracking number from me. Um, I am just shipping booklet only orders for the UK and Europe. The rest of the booklets are coming direct from traditional stitches and the kits are coming from traditional stitches as well and I do not envy Janice and her team shipping out over a thousand um, orders for Anne Morrison. I really really don't. Um, the amount of linen that they have had to cut and the spools and skeins of thread that they have had to pack is just unimaginable. It really, really is. And whilst all of this is going on, they are still dealing with um, their normal orders. And um, I just, you know, hats off to those girls. Janice and her team are absolutely brilliant. They're going like the clappers. Um, I promised that I wouldn't kit up um, Anne Morrison until the kits were well underway being shipped. And my only preparation for Anne Morrison was choosing um, my uh, project bag. So this is my coordinated um, project bag for um, Anne Morrison. And this came from Patchwork Paw Print. Um, the Patchwork Paw Print is an Etsy store uh, in the UK and she does beautiful project bags. These project bags are finished so, so well. And um, this matches Anne Morrison really, really well. I have not pulled my threads at all. And in fact, I'm not actually certain that I have all the threads, um, but I just feel that I want the needle workers who've joined up to the stitch along to have uh, their threads before I actually start uh, to pull my and maybe having to order some. I do have my fabric because um, this is um, an off cut from a, another project and um, it is the Legacy Linen Jersey Cream, which is uh, what the model for Anne Morrison was stitched on. And this is a beautiful linen. This is from Legacy Linen, and um, you, Italian linen is just so beautiful. It just feels so nice in the hand. So that is my preparations so far for Anne Morrison. I have my booklet, and I have uh, my linen, which is a scrap piece from another project, and I have my project bag. I have yet to choose my scissors, and my scissor fob, and my coordinating glasses, and never mind to go with my project, but um, that will come. Um, this week, um, I've been giving some thought to Christmas, and um, how I'm going to decorate my home and whether we're going to go away for Christmas. Ray and I, we like going away for Christmas. Um, and one, it's a big thing um, at the moment, um, eating out and staying somewhere else. So we're giving some thought to that. And there's something else that might be happening in our lives that will prevent us going away for Christmas. So I've been thinking about Christmas decorations and I started to think about um, needlework for Christmas and um, as you know last weekend we released our uh, Tis the Season, the four uh, little girls that are uh, Christmas ornaments. Those girls were um, designed by Sandra and stitched by Leona for us um, and I've been thinking about my Christmas decorations and um, I think it's time 
but um, maybe this is something I've been planning to do for a little while and is to show you some of my very, very early needlework. Um, and a lot of my early needlework um, was to, um, what's the right word? To um, put around my house to make it a home. And um, this is, uh, do you know what, I can't remember who it's by. I'm sure that loads of you will recognise this and you probably have this in your own home. So it says, the north wind doth blow and we shall have snow. And what will the robin do then? So that's a lovely little wintry Christmas scene. So um, this will be going out um, in my home in the month of December. And then um, another little Christmas stitch is um, this one, which is snowflake. Now snowflake, um, the word snowflake have faded a little bit, unfortunately. I did this one such a long time ago. But it's a great little Christmassy um, scene to put out in your home. Um, then that made me think about some of my older pieces that are on display in my home all year round. And um, although all of these have um, wires on the back to hang on the wall, these all sit on um, little uh, easels in uh, the window sills of my home. I have a lot, a lot of windows in this house and I love putting photographs and ornaments and uh, framed needlework on my windowsills. Um, this one is too much of anything is not good but too much stitching is just enough and how true is that? That's such a pretty little sample. Oh look and I stitched that one in 2011 that's 10 years ago. Now I would not have remembered when I'd stitched that if I hadn't put the date on it. Now, I think this is my probably um, joint number one favourite of these sort of small samplers, and that is Thread Gatherer. Um, and it says, cotton wool, silk, cotton wool, silk. I love that. Um, and um, I'm not sure if in the original pattern, these reels were cross-stitched, but I satin stitched them and I did the satin stitch slightly loosely so it looked like um, cotton um, around the reels and with a slightly 3D effect. I built those up with many layers of satin stitch and padding. I really like that one. I love the, the colours. Um, and then of course, you have to have home of a needleworker. That is an absolute must. An absolute must. Um, this one's in my downstairs loo lavatory. Um, in America, you call that a restroom. It's in my downstairs closet or bathroom. We say the downstairs loo. My downstairs loo is actually full of needlework. Um, so, really, that is about all I had to talk about this week. It doesn't seem a lot. Um, thank you to everybody who has purchased um, the PDF download for um, Clara and Maud Picanel, uh, the Bristol Orphanage sampler. This week, we are sending £500 to the Mueller organisation um, and we are sending that money uh, because so many people have purchased the PDF that we're in a position to do that and also uh, because of Claudia Duchess Kitzler's of Dutch Treats Design Kindness in allowing us to reproduce a sampler from her collection. So um, we're actually donating that money um, in Claudia's name to uh, the Mueller's, but it's money that we're able to do so because of your purchases of that PDF. So thank you very much. Um, 
What else can I say other than I hope that everybody has a good week, uh, that your needles fly, and um, it's really, really important that everybody um, is careful with regards to COVID. We had some very sad news on Wednesday. A personal friend of ours that lives um, not far from us, um, they actually died on Tuesday night in ICU from COVID. Um, COVID is real. We have to take sensible precautions. If God is kind, I will be back next week with another one of these crazy floss tube videos. If we went back five, ten years, who would have thought that a group of middle-aged and elderly needle workers would be uh, making uh, videos um, for floss tube, YouTube, uh, about um, all their needlework, retail therapy, and their stitching and sort of sharing parts of their lives. Um, the world is a very different place to the one that we grew up in. Um, but I am very, <clears throat> very, very grateful um, to be part of this community of needle workers. Um, I think that um, it certainly enriched my life. Um, having you all in my life and um, you're all very very important so please stay safe please respect that um, Covid is real and we need to take proper precautions anyway hope to see you again next week and until then bye see bye